Hello, science fair participants. Where are they? Oh, you're first. It's kind of intimidating. Look at all these pictures. A little bit. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good to see you. See you too. Well, we're so proud of you. Thank you. I was reading up on you. You've done great stuff. Thank you very much, husband. All right. So the, uh, I don't know if uh, folks are aware of this story. This young lady uh, is remarkable. They're all remarkable, but I think it's appropriate we start right here. Tell, tell, tell everybody your name. I'm Alana Simon. Alana Simon. And Alana, here's a picture of you when you got sick. So, so what happened? Well, when I was 12 years old, I was diagnosed with a rare form of a pediatric liver cancer called fibrolamellar hepatocellular carcinoma. Wow. <laughs> it's a mouthful. That's so impressive that you can say it. Years of practice. Yeah. <laughs> um, and not many people know much about the disease. No one understood it at the time. And that was pretty scary, but I was lucky in that they caught it early enough. So through you know, a liver surgery in which they resected most of my liver, they were able to get the entire tumor out. And I've been completely fine ever right. since, which is incredible. And you look great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so then a couple years later, I had this internship at a cancer research lab, and I learned about this thing called genetic sequencing, mm -hmm. where you look through someone's DNA, which is the stuff that encodes for you know, your entire body, and you look at people's normal cells and their tumor cells, and you try to figure out what the difference is, what's causing this cancer. Right. And I realized that would be perfect for fibrolamellar, because you don't have to have some kind of base understanding of the disease. And as a pediatric cancer, it seemed to be perfect for you know, looking at your DNA to find the driver mutations. Right. Because since you're younger, you'll have less random mutations. Right. So I talked to my surgeon, actually, who had you know, cured me. And he mentored me, and he actually got a lot of the samples that I used. And he helped me start up this project where I was doing genetic sequencing on the kind of cancer I had had. Right. And what we ended up finding is this one common mutation in every single patient we've looked at right. that seems to be causing this disease. Right. So if you look at these, I made some nice swim noodle these chromosomes. Are, right. So chromosomes where you have all of your DNA stored, which has your genes that encodes for you know, everything. And so here, in blue, I have one gene, and in green, I have another. And what happens in fibromyalgia patients, here is a normal person's chromosome, right. and here is a person with cancer. And so, yeah, you can see there's this one deletion. So if you look at this, when this middle part gets deleted, right. you can see it's noodles, these two genes fuse together, and you get this weird chimeric gene. Mm -hmm. The chimera is, you know, from Greek mythology, you have the head of one creature and the body of another. So here, you have the head of one gene and the body of another. And so that's what happens in these fibrolamellar patients. Mm -hmm. And when these two genes fuse together, this weird new chimera protein is what then goes and turns on all these other genes and actually causes this cancer in patients. And so now that we know this, we can create a blood test to actually test people and diagnose them So we can catch it even quicker. Exactly. Because we know exactly what we're looking for. Precisely. And you then published this in Science Magazine. Yes. <laughs> and received Young Champion of Cancer Research Award. From yeah. American Cancer uh, Society. Yes, it's been incredible. We're so proud of you. Thank you. Now, I, I, can I just say, uh, I did not do this at 12, 13, or 18. And uh, it, uh, it's just inspiring. And, and how about, your, your parents must just like cry every time they see you. Because yes. they do. I'm sure they will today as well. So the, uh, this is just a sampler of the kind of outstanding young talent that we've got. All right, let's go, let's, go, I gotta get a good picture, Pete. This is my photographer. All right. Are you getting the chromosomes yes. in the background? All right. <laughs> so where are you going to school? I'm going to Harvard next fall. Yeah? The, yeah. Uh, are you excited about that? What are you doing I'm during the so summer? I'm so excited. Um, I'm actually working on the lab, gonna start working the, yeah. on the blood test and go to Israel. Yeah, the, uh, are you interested in uh, the research side or, or do you think you might actually wanna go to medical school? Um, I have no idea. I think I'm going to pursue research. Yeah. Computer science is what allowed me to do right. all of this research, so right. I'm definitely planning on studying computer science, but I'll find some way to apply that to research or Good. whatever I choose. <laughs> well, we're very proud. Give me a hug. Thank you very much. That's great. You're just doing great. Thank you. Uh, unbelievable. That's wonderful. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. <laughs> I can tell you're, you're, you're a high-powered guy. <laughs> What's your name? I'm Peyton, P-Y-T-O-N. <laughs> Great to see you. And where are you from, Peyton? I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So what do we got here? What is all this? So I actually have two projects. You have two? Was... One was not enough. Uh, I have... You decided uh, you had to have two. I don't know. They asked me to bring two. All right. So here I designed retractable training wheels. 
It allows a lido to adjust the height of the training wheels while actually lighting a bike. So when you're feeling confident, yeah. you just twist the traction handle. Uh huh. That's smart. And the wheels can come up. So you you so you can basically, rather than get your screwdriver and you're like unscrewing everything. There you go. And then you realize I'm still kind of wobbly, and then you got to put them back on. That, that's here. Easier. You can just kind of see how are you feeling during the course of the thing. Right. But in any case, if you want, to, if you feel like you're about to fall yeah. and lose your balance, right away comes right back down. And in any position, it locks in place. So even if you start to lose your balance, it will still give you enough time for people to twist back to the starting position. I could still use this now. Do you have an adult version, or is it only on uh, uh, smaller bikes? Well, I'm working with a kids' bike manufacturer right now to help get it on the market, but I'm sure it could be applied to. Um, other I think that's well. probably right. Yeah. <laughs> have you have you patented this? I have a patent pending on yeah, both of these actually. Okay. Well, let's hear about the other one before we uh, get, uh, get uh, into the patent issue. All right. So so, what's the second th uh, project you got here? So here I redesigned the sandal sandbag, replacing the traditional sand with polymer and salt. You know, living in Florida, I know how devastating hurricanes and saltwater flooding can be. Right. You know, um, we just had Hurricane Sandy in the news, and I right survived right. through Hurricane Wilma when I was four by just hiding in the closet with my mom, which was such a scary experience. I can imagine. You yeah. still remember that, huh? Oh, I do. Um, many parts of it. Now, but, how old are you now? Um, I'm 12. Okay. All right. And, you know, today, while well, sandbags are the most common method of flood protection, right. they can be heavy. And difficult to transport. Right, I remember because yeah. I've, 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 I've like the sand carried, across the yeah, beach. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've helped out sometime in hurricanes. And, yeah. And they also leave gaps in between the individual bags when you stack them. They don't. They don't uh, compress together. Right. Right. So I wanted to redesign the sandal sand bag, replacing the sand with polymer and salt. So when dry, my bags are very really lightweight. They weigh only four pounds. But then when you add water, it expands and becomes heavy and becomes thirty pounds and offers protection against saltwater flooding. So if I know that the flood's coming, <coughs> I can pack these up, we can deliver them to the site much easier, you can fit more bags in there, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't even have to add water because by definition the water's coming in to hit the bag. Well yes, you can do that. Um, that is definitely a way, if you would, if before the flood, if you want to be sure, you can also hose you it down. You just hose it down. That's another way you would want to do it. And the other advantage is if you stack them when they're lightweight, you don't have to carry all these heavy bags, right. but also the, the polymer will expand and it'll fill in the gaps in between the individual bags while still being bonded by these interlocking fastener systems. So it'll still stick together and you won't have the gaps in between the individual bags that you have with traditional sandbags. Okay, look, t time out here. Now, now the, uh, s where, where did you get the idea of, this one I kind of get, right? Because yeah. basically you skin your knee and you thought, you know, we should have a better design on this thing. Yeah, this was actually when my sisters were first learning okay, how to ride a bike. Yeah. All right. yeah. so, so that, how did you get the idea for the whole polymer thing though? Well, you know, I definitely thought about this living in Florida, but right. for um, the idea for polymer, you know, for another idea that I had had earlier, I got to um, learn a little bit about polymer for a university that I went to, um, University of Mississippi, to kind of, and I learned a little bit about polymers. And one How old were you when you went to the University of Mississippi? I was about eight or so. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, the, <laughs> and, uh, and, um, so, uh, polymers to me found everywhere. They're found in our skin tissues, they're found right. in plants. But the type of polymer that I used here is super absorbent polymer, which takes on water and expands when wet. So as you see here, this is what a polymer looks like when it's all curled up. Yeah, but I then when you add water, it straightens out through hydrogen bonding and expands like this. Here, you want to try? I do. <laughs> I actually have one of these. Oh, you do? Yeah, it's called a Hoberman sphere. But they're very cool. Yeah, it's I called a Hoberman sphere. Sometimes I just stare at them in space. Yeah. I know. Sometimes in the Oval Office, I just look at one of these. <laughs> Try to pick. The, uh, well, the, uh, so, so, so you, you have a pen pending on this as well, huh? I do. And, you know, but the idea of polymer has, in my same bag, has been around for a while. People have used it in diapers, in instant okay. snow, right. and in other sandals bags. Right. And it takes on water and expands when wet. Oh, I see. You've got to, you, you can show us here. As you can see here, I've been doing these little mini test tubes for all the other guests, all your big ones for you. Okay. See there? Watch what's happening. Look at that. Yeah. Now this isn't going to spill over, is it? This no, is not the blob, is it? It's not going to. <laughs> it's not going to eat up the White House. 
Hope not. <laughs> there you go. Um, but the key to my design is the addition of salt. As you can see here, seawater has a higher salt content and is therefore denser and heavier than tap water. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, the seawater sits below the dyed tap water because right. it has a higher salt content and is therefore denser. Right. So I can show you here. What's your favorite color? Pick one. Uh, blue. Okay. I did blue. Okay, red. <laughs> Not really my favorite, but that's all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just <kidding. laughs> um, so, um, so if you pull this, this <laughs> if you pull this in without um without breaking the surface tension, yeah. you can get this dyed tap water to sit on top, just like that. Just as it is here. Just as it is here. Right. Perfect. Okay. And this is important to my sandbag because I didn't want my bags to float away during the flood. Obviously, that would be bad. Right. So what I did was I added salt. So the water that came into the bag would be heavier and denser than the approaching seawater. So therefore, it would sink below the, appro the approaching seawater so my bags wouldn't float away during the flood. Well, the, 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 this, is, this is all remarkable stuff. Now, the, uh, so you're 12. What grade <coughs> are you in? Um, I'm in sixth grade. You're technically in sixth grade, um, the, uh, but uh, uh, are, are, are you thinking you might try to finish high school a little quicker and get to university a little faster? Uh, well, or actually, do you want to just kind of take uh, your time? And yeah, you know, actually the program that I'm doing now, it allows me to accelerate in certain areas. Uh, so I'm taking like higher level math and science right. classes, and I'm taking grade level English and other stuff. That makes so perfect it's sense. A, yeah. Well, come on, let's take a good picture. Come on. So, thank you. Wait, 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 Pete, where are you at? Oh, here we are. All right. Make sure you got the, the, the polymers in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, now, uh, one last question. Where do I buy stock in you? <laughs> huh? Yes. Let's, let's just invest in this guy. And then we'll see, like, 20 years from now, we'll be rich. I was not like this. <laughs> Really proud of you, man. Thank you so much. Huh? Thank and you, you make a great presentation also. Thank you. Huh? You have great confidence and clarity in Thank how you. you're describing what you do. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. How are you? I'm good. How are you? What's your name? Deidre Cario. Good to see you, Deidre. The, uh, now, is that Deirdre? Deirdre. 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 Yeah. Okay, I got <laughs> it. I get it. Now, this looks like uh, a, a electric go-kart. Is, is that what it is? That's basically what it is. That's basically what it is. And uh, where are you from? I am from San Antonio, Texas. Okay, and and so tell me about uh, how you got involved in this project. Well, that's a funny story. Um, I was the shortest in my senior class. Yeah, and I, can't, I can't believe that. <laughs> I was. And they said, you would fit perfectly in this car. So that's how it started. And I've been doing this for three years. The, uh, so... Describe to me this vehicle, and uh, the goal here is to, is it, is the goal to have, you know, in these contests, the fastest uh, uh, electric car, or the one that can travel the furthest, or both? It's more about being, going the furthest and being smart on your battery management. That is what the competition is basically about. So it's like efficiency. Yeah. Yes. Right? The goal is, how efficient is it? Uh, uh, relative to the amount of power that's being generated yes. electric, uh, electrically. Okay, the, uh, well I clearly cannot fit in this. <laughs> are, are you able to fit in yes, it I'm still? Yes, I'm actually able to fit in what, it. Would you like to d display it or do you think uh, you, won't look at, uh, you won't look cool and you just kind of want to point think, it? Yes, Come definitely. Come on, let's, let's see in it. Come on. Um, I don't have to get in through Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> so so how, how, how fast does this thing go? That's a pretty serious seatbelt, by the way. Yes. That's the same one that uh, we have on the uh, Blackhawk. Oh. Our Blackhawk helicopters. Yes, um, a big guideline is safety. So I do wear motorcycle helmets right. and I am very well taken care of. How bet. <laughs> All right. <laughs> How big was the team that helped you design the car? We started in a team of six and now we're a group of 14. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you, you, fit, you fit like a glove. Yes. And, and what's that uh, What's that little panel there? This, what is that? Is that the control? Uh, this tells me the volts and amps. It would, uh, during competition, I am focusing on going in circles and 
well, we were supposed to do telemetry. Telemetry would have helped a huge amount. Uh -huh. But this tells me how many volts I'm running, how many amps, right. and I communicate back to my electrical chief. Yeah. And he tells me how fast to go, to slow down. So, so he's going to give you calculations yes. based on uh, optimizing the efficiency yes. of the entire process. The, uh, and how fast is, are you typically going when you're in a, uh, one of these contests? Uh, the fastest, the constant we want is 35. 35 miles an hour? 35. That's pretty fast. Yes. The fastest actually was 38. I got you. <laughs> so what are you doing now, now that you've... Uh, uh, done such an outstanding job. Are you interested in being uh, an, an engineer? Did this prompt uh, a long-term interest? Well, my job actually is public relations along with driver. So I'm actually thinking of pursuing public relations. Excellent. And part-time driver. And a part-time driver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations. All right, come on over here. Let, let's get a good picture here. Look at all these big trophies. Yes. Trophies are bigger than you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, scoot over so we can see them. There we go. <laughs> Well, we're very proud of you. <laughs> Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. What's going on, guys? What's your name, man? Dejan. Dejan, good to see you. Jerry. Jerry, good to see you. Brooke. Good to see you. Uh, so where are you guys from? Hudson, Massachusetts. Hudson, Massachusetts. Yep. And what grade are you in? Eighth. Eighth grade. All right, so what do we got here? We made a catapult. It's a catapult. Yep. <laughs> All right, so, so let's, uh, I, I assume we got to see it work, right? <laughs> yes, sir. All right, the, uh, before, before I see it work, tell me, is this uh, been an ongoing project at the school? Uh, I mean, does each year, is there sort of a catapult contest, like no. a robot building contest, or is this so something that, that kind of happened uh, uh, on its own? After school, we were part of Raytheon uh -huh. at the Boys and Girls Club. So we just- So Raytheon's a sponsor uh, at the Boys and Girls Club? Yes. I well, got we you. were part of it last year. I see. And okay. we came in second out of 45 teams. That's excellent. The, uh, and, and what, uh, uh, how did you get the idea of, of catapults, or was it everybody was doing catapults? No. No, so we had a lot of topics to choose from since we all play basketball mostly. You all who? Yep. All right. Okay. <laughs> so we chose basketball and we wanted to figure out the angle and trajectory to make in the three pointer. Yeah. Okay. So the, uh, so that, and that's, so did you construct this whole catapult yourself here? Yes. And our Boys and Girls Club director, Gary Byler, helped us make it. Where'd you get this guy? I don't know. Well, he got it and then we made it. So it's pretty serious looking guy. <laughs> All right, the, uh, you want to uh, you want to show me how it works? Yeah. Now, how fast does this thing go? Is it going to break anything? No, no, just we tested a few times. Okay, should I stand behind you just in case? Right here. here, no, I want you to protect me <laughs> in case this thing. I, I'm, I'm going to hide behind you because I don't want to. Oh, okay. Well, I think I can, ha that I can handle. All right, let's try it again. Yeah. All right, I just want to make, last time I was here, there was a guy who was shooting marshmallows <laughs> out of a rifle, or, and it, or like it was this modified vacuum cube. You guys remember that? Oh, yeah. yes. That thing went fast. <laughs> yeah, it went right up there. It went right up there, didn't it? it the marshmallow might still be there. <laughs> All right, let's try it out. Come on. Oh, that was a little low. Yeah. Well, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Come on. That was a perfect pass. See? We didn't want it to go too high. No, no. The, uh, well, congratulations. The, uh, d is this prompted an interest in uh, any of you uh, wanting to be like engineers or designers or, or work on technology, stuff like that? No, not really. No. I want to go to college for basketball. You, oh, you want to be a basketball player? Yeah, everybody wants to be a basketball player. I understand until they, uh, until they get college. And how, how tall is your dad and mom? Uh, not that tall. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just, just want to make that point. You want keep keep up with your science uh, homework. All right, everybody. Uh, Pete, where are you? Look at this guy right over here. All right, we're proud of you guys. Thank you. Thank Good. You. Yep. Thank you. All right, you take care of yourself. You too. All right, what do we got here, young young people? These are my Chicago homies right here, right? Yep. Where do you guys go to school? I go to Lincoln Park. Lincoln Park. Go to Hales from Sixth High School. It is great to see you both excellent schools. And what's your name? And JT. JT. Lydia. Lydia. All right. So you guys uh, start getting into robots. Is that right? Yeah. The uh, how did you first become interested in robots? Right. Well, in Chicago there is where there weren't very many opportunities for robotics. So what my mom did was she went out inside that she would bring Mickey into Chicago. 
So now we've created over half the teams in Chicago. And so your mom basically started the whole robot trend. Yeah. I like that dinner. We got to the Taste Chicago, and that's how more people get brought in. That's so great. The, uh, and, and so, uh, so do you have a bunch of different robotics teams in Chicago? Yes. It, does Hales Franciscan have one team, and then uh, Lane uh, has a different one? Or do you guys all come from different schools uh, and, and sort of form like a club? We all come from different schools. Uh -huh. My team this year combined with Chicago Knights, since we're having the trouble. Uh -huh. Excellent. All right. So, so uh, looks like you guys have been doing pretty good. What, what do we have here? Is this uh, an example of one of our, one of your, some of your handiwork here? Yeah. This is uh, our FRC robot from this year. Uh huh. It played a game sort of like lacrosse, where it had a two-foot ball that it picked up. Right. <coughs> so this arm comes down. Yeah. And then the rollers suck it up, and then it brings it back. And then we have a foot over here that we use to kick it, kick the ball. Oh, I see. Okay. Now this one, we're not modeling in here, I gather. Right. We can uh, show the arm going down and the wheels. Yeah, we, the, but no actual ball. Yeah. Because we'd hit one of these guys, which, you know, yeah. I, I, I like them. Actually, this is a pretty good group. There's some where I wouldn't have mind. <laughs> but I don't see them here. All right, let's, let's see. So All there's, good? there's two different um, drivers for it. Uh -huh. There is the part that controls the arm going up and down. Right. And then there's the part that controls the arm going up and Got it. And so these are all manually controlled? Yeah. The game is broken up into two parts. There's one part where the robot drives by itself right. for 30 seconds. And then there's the two minutes where the robot is driven against five other robots on the field. So a three, three game. That sounds pretty fun. Yeah. yeah? The, uh, so how long did it, it take you to uh, construct this particular robot? Uh, six weeks. Six weeks? Yeah. Six weeks to design and build. And everybody's given the challenge at the same time. Outstanding. Well, I'm, I'm so proud of you guys. Come on, let, let's take a good picture next to your robot. Here. You come over here. You get over here. And Pete, make sure the robot's in the picture. All right. Fantastic. All right. The, uh, so has this spurred an interest in you uh, wanting to uh, stay in uh, engineering and technology and things like that? Yes. Before yeah. uh, joining this, I didn't know that there were so many engineering jobs out there. Absolutely. Yeah. But now that I know that I want to go into security. Yeah. Well, you're going to be one of those engineers. Yeah. Y you too. We especially need uh, young women in uh, engineering and sciences. All right? I'm looking forward to seeing you guys do great things. I'm Thank proud of you. Tell everybody back home I said hi. Thank you. All right? Thank you. you bet. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? What's your name? I'm Eric. Good to see you, Eric. Where are you from? You. I'm from San Diego. San Diego? So what year are you in school now? I'm a senior now. You're a senior? Mm -hmm. Do you know what you're going to be doing next year? I'll be going to Harvard. I bet you are. <laughs> so what do we got here? Yeah, so um, right, I, in summary, what I was able to do was use computers to speed up the discovery of new medicine for the flu. And flu right now is a really big threat where you have strains like H5N1, uh -huh. H7N9. I, I spend a lot of time worrying about uh, <laughs> the possibility of pandemic. Yeah. Right, and they're only one mutation away from possibly causing a pandemic. Right. And the problem is we have no really effective treatments for it. Um, the flu vaccines, so like flu shots, they take several months to prepare. And um, that's a time window where millions of people could be dying. Right. And the current antiviral drugs, so like a pill you would take and you get better from the flu, it's losing their, they're losing their effectiveness because of um, resistant flu strains. Right. And so there's this urgent need for new flu medicine to kind of hold back the pandemic wave while vaccines are being developed. Right. And so right now, uh, drug companies are still kind of in that industrial era of drug discovery where they found, hey, we can make robots do everything. So they make robots test millions and millions of chemicals to just find a few that might become real drugs. But that's not very efficient. Exactly. And so, um, it's sort of trial by error as opposed to... Exactly. It's like kind of brute force rather than right. uh, reasoning by logic. Right. And what I've been able to do is use computers to first virtually go through um, huge chemical libraries yeah. and predict which ones would be most likely to work. Uh -huh. And then followed by only testing those, that small fraction that's most likely to work. Right. And so I've been able to take a compound library of almost half a million chemicals and then using computer modeling, um, <coughs> isolate the top 237. And, 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 and what... Uh, what is allowing you to, what are the factors that allow you to winnow this down? What, what is it that you can anticipate 
would make uh, a possible vaccine more effective. Uh, uh, right, so um, it's actually not a flu shot, it'd actually be a drug. So I it see. would be like, yeah, it's a curative rather than a preventive. Okay, so, so rather than the traditional giving you a little bit of flu to, to right. boost your uh, immunity to the flu, it's this, actually this giving is one you that's a actually chemical, a chemical cure. Right. That's and, fascinating. Yeah, and one of the great advantages to um, one of the targets that I'm choosing to uh, make these chemicals for is that um, it's highly conserved among flu strains, meaning that um, it could potentially work against any flu strain, even if you have no idea where it's coming from. And so um, basically, well, one of the ways that I'm looking at kind of finding these chemicals that work is actually um, kind of taking, well, how it works is you're targeting a protein of the flu virus. And um, so this is actually a 3D printed structure of one of the flu proteins that I'm targeting. And um, this thing was in my nose just about three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> it lasted forever. Couldn't get rid of it. <laughs> Not really, I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, so, the, uh, so this, this right. is a 3D model of uh, a nasty flu bug right there. Right, and, how, uh, and what we do is we are, I'm trying to find these little kind of chemicals like that. <clears throat> they'll kind of fit into this pocket right here and right. jam it and stop it from working. Right. And so um, well, by doing this, um, so how the computer does it is it takes kind of the million or the half a million different kind of chemical structures right. and fits each one in <coughs> and then it ranks them based on how well they fit. And so by doing that, um, if the ones that fit really well are kind of more predicted to. More, more likely to. Exactly. To, to, to work. The, uh, well, now this is a pretty significant new direction in terms of uh, uh, developing a, a, a flu drug. Right. And, um, and you're only in high school. <laughs> so uh, the question is, uh, has this approach gained sort of converts uh, among the drug companies where they say to themselves, you know what, actually this is pretty promising? Right, well, uh, so. Or are you still, uh, because of it's in its infancy, uh, they don't know how smart you are, and, and uh, it'll take them a while to figure well, it out. Well, so research groups have started using these kind of new innovative tools for kind of, yeah, rational drug discovery. Right. And um, the problem, well, drug companies, they're huge, and because of that, they they're are. kind of sluggish to responding to this kind of innovation. And so one big thing is actually kind of convincing them to um, kind of take up um, these different tools in order to yeah. make it more, a much more efficient process. Well, well part, of it, part of the reason this is so important, as you know, is because uh, the economics of producing flu vaccines uh, is, it's not a big money maker for the drug companies. Right. If we can come up with computer models that narrow the R&D. Right. By making it much cheaper, you can actually you can actually start uh, producing them and adapting them. Right, and making quickly. them cheaper for the people That's that exactly need right. it. Right. This is really important. You mm -hmm. could this could end up being the start of saving millions of lives, huh? <laughs> Hopefully. That's you know the uh, you probably now do you also like uh, are you like a champion lacrosse player? And <laughs> no, I fence though. You you fence. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over here. <laughs> right here. All right, I'm such an underachiever. <laughs> You're going to do great. Thank you. I'm, I'll be on the lookout for this because uh, we're spending a lot of time, uh, you know, uh, trying to puzzle this out. So. All right. All right.